Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's been 50 years since man first stepped foot on the moon. And for as long as humans have lived on Earth, its mystery has been a focus of fascination. Now the moon is in our sights again, with a mission dubbed Artemis that hopes to send the first woman and the next man to the lunar surface by 2024. So what is Mission Artemis and how has spaceflight changed over the decades? Since the Apollo program closed in on its goal to send humans safely to the moon and back in the late 1960s, the new US administration under President Donald Trump now aims to make a return to space in a big way. Earlier this year, Trump tweeted that he'd be investing a further £1.3 billion on top of the £17 billion already allocated to help fund NASA's return to the moon by 2024. We're going to be back on the moon very soon, and someday soon, we will plant the American flag on Mars. It's happening, Gene. It's happening. But this time, humans will go where no one has gone before, the moon's south pole. Project Artemis was aptly named after the twin sister of Apollo and goddess of the moon in Greek mythology. But it also has a deeper meaning. The space agency's administrator, Jim Bridenstine, likened its name to the program's goal of inclusion, as this time around, womankind will take her first steps on the moon. The President of the United States has now announced that we are going back to the moon, but we are not repeating Apollo. This time when we go to the moon, he has declared it will be sustainable. In other words, we're going to go to the moon to stay. Artemis is also an abbreviation for the things NASA says it's still discovering. Acceleration, reconnection, turbulence and electrodynamics of the moon's interaction with the sun. The space agency's long-term goal is to one day be able to send humans to Mars. And it's likely that what space explorers uncover from Earth's nearest neighbour will provide some insight into the challenges that are yet to come when conquering the red planet. So how will the next generation of astronauts make it to the moon? And what will they do once they're there? Science and technology has come on leaps and bounds since Apollo launched Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin into space. Now in the 21st century, hoping to blast off the next generation of space explorers is a bigger and better spacecraft, and its name is Orion. Um, of course, technology has advanced in so many ways. We have learned so much. Uh, we have developed in different ways. But there are a lot of things that are very similar. You know, the challenges of entering into space and spaceflight, the risks are still there. While it might be similar in shape to its predecessor, Apollo, the Orion is a major upgrade. For one thing, it's much larger with shinier sports electronics that's decades more advanced and it can carry up to six passengers. That's double what Apollo could. It will also work in tandem with the Space Launch System rocket, better known as the SLS, which will carry Orion using the most powerful engine ever used. However, this also means a more powerful launch abort system is needed to keep humans safe if something were to go wrong. The overall aim of the mission is to develop an ongoing presence on the surface of the moon so that us Earthlings can benefit from the excavation of its resources and to build a better understanding of the lunar environment. To help this along, there are plans for a space station to be sent up to orbit, named the Gateway, which will be a permanent base for scientific experiments and excursions to the lunar surface. The Gateway will stay in space for 30 to 90 day stints, paving the way for further exploration into the unknowns of deep space. Anytime we want, anywhere we want, we can get to the surface of the moon. That is the sustainable return to the moon. NASA claims that this mission will be the testbed for future journeys to Mars, but they're not the only ones hoping to get there in the next few years. Private space companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin have long been competing in a space race, Destination Mars. They've teamed up with NASA in part to help one day establish a lunar economy. They'll also help to develop landers that will ship astronauts to the surface of the moon. We're going sustainably. We're going with commercial partners, which was in Space Policy Directive 1, and we're going with international partners. 
In total, NASA says it's given £36 million to US companies, including nine smaller space agencies that will invest funding into developing equipment to harvest the moon's resources like water, which can be broken down and converted into rocket fuel. We've recently discovered there's water ice on the moon, so if we can go mine those resources, we can maybe find a way to separate them and have rocket fuel, which then propels us further. It's expensive to launch things into outer space, so if we can find resources on the moon, that's less we have to launch, and that helps us really take the next step to push beyond. Just like 50 years ago, this next achievement in space exploration is likely to be the beginning of more unimaginable discovery, proving that the greatest journey starts with a single step.